Hello everyone. This is a really quick, because we started talking about digital audio workstations, I wanted to show you really quickly how Cubase works, perhaps problems that you could encounter if you're just installing stuff for the first time. This should work with most DAWs, so if you've got Ableton, Logic, any of those, but obviously we're looking at Cubase, so this is more specific to Cubase at the time being, but all going to plan, you've got Cubase on your computer, whether it's a Mac or PC. I've got it on my PC here, not just my laptop. Um, I've got a RME sound card, so any digital audio interface, any sound card setup. At the moment, I'm just running through headphone out through the speaker, so it won't be as good quality. But I forgot my breakout box for it. But anyway, so we've got my sound card set up for USB. I've plugged it in. I've installed the drivers. That's the first step. So you've installed Cubase. You've registered the software drivers are the next thing to do for your sound card. Now, they're called ASIO drivers or ASIO drivers. They are really good. They're definitely worth having because the generic ones built into software nowadays are good, but the actual speed latencies, they call it, the latency is the amount of time it takes for the conversion, the audio, so you're recording guitar or microphone to hit the sound card, convert it to digital, the DAW to read it, record it, you listen back, that's your latency. It's called an all-round trip latency, that. An input latency is purely the conversion at the front end. The output latency is what we hear, but the all-round latencies are all linked up. Okay. Modern Azure drivers have got very good latency, and generally, if you're looking around 6 to 10 milliseconds all-round latency, you really, it's very difficult to hear. I don't hear, 6 milliseconds is absolutely no worries whatsoever. Okay, so I've loaded Cubase, I did that previously. The first screen that comes up is this empty screen. So if you've never used Cubase before, this is the screen you'll see when you load it up. Okay, the most important thing, and I can't emphasize this enough, is always make a new project for a new composition. Because certainly if you're in, say, a school, or if you've got multiple people using um, the computer, or even if you're doing a lot of work yourself, if you've got loads of projects saved, or even more than one project saved, on one specified area, one folder, it's called an audio pool. Cubase and DAW saved to where they an, an audio pool. They may not all call it the audio pool, but it's basically a big pool where all your audio is saved. Now, if you've got two projects running in one audio pool, so you've got two you've got two projects in one folder, say you empty an audio pool in order to keep your computer running efficiently so your hard drive running efficiently because you don't want loads of unused takes the chances are you're going to delete the information you had before and I've seen this many times I quite often get phone calls from people saying they've lost they can't understand where why they've deleted their information they can't find tracks so the project loads but it's got blank areas where the audio should be and it's all down to the audio pool always make a new folder for your audio pool for your for your um new project so that's what we're gonna do now so this is what comes up you can make a template which we're going to do as well i'll show you how to make a template which is really it's a quick way of speeding up your working process but at the moment we're not going to make a template we're just going to create an empty project so you can see how cubase looks so here we go down here prompt me for location this is what we've got to do and then we go create. Now, this is my parts of the PC, so I'm just going to go to my data drive, and then I look at composition. So I've got, not only have I got a partitioned hard drive, but it doesn't matter if you haven't, but even if it's on your C drive, make a compositions folder, then save new folders to that. Okay, so I'm going to make a new folder, and it's going to be Cubase try because it's our first attempt and then return him and there you can see it's highlighted Cubase try okay now this is what you'll see in front of you this is your blank Cubase project it might look may look slightly different I've changed some of the colors because quite often I work at night and stuff so I found this color scheme better but this is basically what you'll have in front of you down here you've got your transport bar this gives you your options of play record stop loop fast forward, re rewind, you've got your metronome, you've got your beats per minute, a lot of this we will discuss down the left hand side but we don't have to worry about punching and punch out at the moment. If your transport bar isn't there, there's a simple shortcut which is F2. 
F2 will bring up your transport bar. Really is quite useful. Certainly when you're working on a laptop because you don't want it there all the time. You want to be able to have the full screen for working. Saying that, all of these as well can be minimised and maximised for your working environment. Okay, so let's just check we've got sound. Next video we're going to try and input some data, but let's see if we've got sound. So easiest thing to do with that is press F2, get the transport bar up, make sure my click's on, which it is, the metronome there. If I press now, I have. I've got through my speaker, I've got an audible click because the metronome's on. If you haven't got this, this is probably the most frustrating part, setting up your, your DAW to work. It's down to your sound card. Always look, first port of call, device setup. So, really is useful this one. We go to devices at the top, device setup, and then you see here we've got VST audio system. So I went devices, device setup, VST audio system. And because you've set whatever, it doesn't matter if you're not using a sound card, but say you you can't get any sound out of your sound card. The reason being nine times out of 10 is because the driver will be set either to another audio interface like there. It may not let me switch because I haven't got him switched it. He's not plugged in. It will let me go to a generic. This is um, Steinberg, Cubase's own. So at the moment, it will go through the, you'll hear the click through the laptop sound um, speakers, but we want it to, we want the, our sound card, whatever it be, if it's an M audio, if it's a Line 6, if it's a PreSonus, Focusrite, doesn't matter, but once you've installed the drivers, it will show up here in your VST audio system. So I know mine's the RME Fireface, so now I've clicked on that, and also the beauty of using these drivers are the latencies are so much better. So. You can see here my initial, the input latency is three milliseconds, output latency is three and a bit. So the all round is about seven milliseconds at the moment. I haven't got it set to the lowest, but it's workable at the moment. Okay, so your sound card is now talking to Cubase. So you're nearly there. The other thing to check, it's always worth checking under devices, connections, and as you can see, because I didn't have this set, here's my inputs and outputs. Inputs, I want to have analog one, analog two, so channels one and two. The reason they give you more is if you were gonna record drums and you wanted eight microphones, some sound cards have eight inputs, some have 16, you can have, you can even use ADAT or different things to, to make even more inputs if you wanted. And outputs, I was telling me, my analog is there. Sometimes it might say not connected. So I've got analog on the left hand side, analog one, analog two on the right hand side. So that's my stereo one and two is going to the speakers. Okay. So now we're nearly ready to go on a project. Other things to look at on the metronome, on sorry, your BPM down here next to the metronome. I've got it 120, you can specify that to any BPM you want. If you're going to be recording MIDI, so that's using a USB keyboard, it doesn't matter actually. You can speed things up, slow things up, so you can start at 120 and then you change your project to 160 and the MIDI information will change, the electronic information will change. Problem is when you record audio, if you recorded a vocal track and then you try and change the BPM of the piece, the vocals won't change and then you have to use something called beat stretching and time stretching and if you're going more than 10 to 20 well 10 d um 10 um bpm you're going to start noticing audio artifacts you know it won't sound quite right okay so it's worth getting a rough idea of what your bpm is going to be at the start then it's getting your tracks ready in order to start a project down this left hand side this is where our track information is going to be and for this project let's record because it's Eventually, we're going to record the little intro to my YouTube channel. So, I'm going to add audio track. Audio are anything that's guitar, microphones, anything that's analog recording. So, generally, it would be something like maybe a keyboard out and out of a keyboard, or if, whatever instrument it might be an electronic drum kit if you're not using MIDI and you want to go just out of the sound model of the drum machine. But generally, guitars, microphones, anything that 
is an analog signal. Okay, so guitar is mono, um, microphones are mono, unless you're using more than one at the same time. Keyboards are generally stereo, sometimes you can use a mono um, channel, but we're good, for this, all sense of purposes now, we're going to use a guitar, so we're going to go mono input, and I'm going to name these tracks. Okay, so we know F2 brings up the um, transport bar, so we can play stop. Space bar starts and stops your track, that's very useful. F3, really other useful one, brings up your mixer. Your mixer is where you can change the level of each track. So if we've made guitar one was perhaps too loud, we can bring that down. We've got panning, so you can put that through different speakers to left and right. We'll look at these in more detail. If I, it's quite difficult to get back, but C is central. Inserts, these are for adding effects. Cubase comes with loads of effects built in. We're going to look at those in more detail. Your channel strip is your all parts like an old um, mixing desk channel. If you think of it as a mixing desk channel, we'll look at that in more detail. Sends and returns, again, we'll look at those. They're for sending out if you want to use, a, say, a reverb on a the same reverb or same effect on numerous channels but we won't get bogged down with too much with that at the moment okay so we've made five guitar tracks they're ready to go here you can see these are I can arm these when I say arm that means it's ready to record the little thing here with the speaker sign that's monitoring so if you're in a different room to your vocalist or guitarist or you're monitoring a a direct signal and you can't hear it you can press monitor and you'll be able to actually hear what's going on sometimes like, if you have got a very low latency sound card that's quite useful as well if someone wants a comfort v reverb on their vocals or something like that they want to have an effect when they're singing it gives them a bit more um security when singing little e is edit and that gives you all of the information we just did when we pressed f3 you've got all your inserts which are for effects channel strip which we discussed earlier equalizer graphic equalizer so this is from low to high frequencies it's got 20 hertz 20,000 there and also presets always in Cubase the little box on the right hand side helps you load presets the one thing I want to quickly look at before we go is MIDI now there's all kinds of ways of bringing up MIDI information the one I'd I would suggest that I'm going to show you a quick route using Media Bay and Loop Browser, but F11 is your shortcut for bringing in MIDI tracks. So, or MIDI is quite an old fashioned name now, I suppose they call them instrument tracks. So, you see here, I've pressed F11. F11 brings up a little add keyboard sound sign there, a little plus sign. It's telling me at the moment I've got no VST instruments, so that's no, I haven't got any synthesizers or anything I can use. Again, I've got a lot on here, but I just want to use the ones that are built into Cubase itself. And say, let's, we're going to make a drum module. So, little drop down menu, I've gone to Groove Agent, which is under drums, so it tells you it's a drum module, and then Add Track might take a while to load because it has a lot of um it will load samples as it goes sometimes so and then we get a drum sampler up and again we'll go we'll do a video on actually just you purely using this but again up here you've got presets or if you click on this black area here you can actually load the attributes themselves so i was looking at dance kit last time so in my search i put dance but you can anything at all and load it up and it will bring it in and that's actually triggering samples but via MIDI we'll discuss more on that but and you see down here because we went to F11 we added an instrument a new instrument drum instrument it made a track for us but what it didn't do is called it Groove Agent SE I want to call this drums because when we do the intro we'll have drums and I think a nice colour is yellow for drums. And then Control S is another quick 
way of saving your information. The reason it's asking for a file name is because I haven't saved it yet. This is the first time we're saving. Every other time when you do this, Control S will save your information. So I'm going to call it the same thing. Cubase try, save. So when we go video two, when we start actually recording stuff, this is what we'll see in front of us. Once we get this and to a point we're happy as well, we'll be able to save this as a template. So every single time you then go onto Cubase, it'll be there running. So you won't have to go through this process once you've got it set up. Good luck.